the adventure of entrepreneurship and building a life and business you love, preferably at the same time, is not for the faint of heart. That's why Heather Pierce Campbell is bringing you a dose of guts, grit, and great business stories that will inspire and motivate you to create what you want in your business and life. Welcome to the Guts, Grit, and Great Business Podcast, where endurance is required. Now here's your host, the legal website warrior, Heather Pierce Campbell. Welcome to the Guts, Grit, and Great Business Podcast and show. My name is Heather Pierce Campbell, and I'm so happy to have you here. I know your time is precious. I know you have a host of other things that you could be doing right now. I know that if your life is like mine currently, if you have children, a business, a new job as a homeschool teacher to a seven-year-old, and another full-time job as a house cleaner because of your largely unmonitored two-year-old tornado, then you have approximately 89 other things you should be doing right now. And so because you are listening to a show called Guts, Grit, and Great Business, I know one of two things about you. You are committed to your own business or path of entrepreneurship, or you like a good story about guts and grit. Maybe it's both. Either way, welcome. I'm so glad you are here. First, let's talk about this podcast. This is a show about entrepreneurship, about life, about building businesses and lives that we love brick by brick by brick. It's about the regular challenges along the way, the weather, the windstorms, the downed power lines, and it's about the moments that bring us to our knees, to the edge of those deep chasms that change the course of our lives or businesses in an instant. It's about what we do during crisis during the hard times. It's about the beauty and strength and brilliance of the human spirit. And it's about the vast and deep potential we have for creation. It's specifically about how we express that never ending potential for creation through our businesses and personal lives and about the good we create in the world through our work. As an attorney that supports entrepreneurs around the world, I want to reiterate that point. I believe that entrepreneurship, that building a business is one of the greatest opportunities we have in life for self-expression, for the expression of our greatest good in the world. That's what drives me. I want to see entrepreneurs everywhere thrive. My work is dedicated to helping entrepreneurs create and build their businesses launch their work into the world, and reduce their risks so that they can increase their rates of success, increase their influence and their longevity in their work, and thrive through their businesses. A rising tide lifts all boats. If we have throngs of mission-driven entrepreneurs, socially conscious entrepreneurs building successful businesses, they are better able to support themselves, their families or loved ones, their communities, create influence and contribute to causes that they care about on a whole new level. That is what drives me. Have you taken those tests that assess your personality and tell you what work you should be doing in the world? Every time I've taken one, the answers are the same. While lawyer is on the list, what is also a fit for my personality is being a coach, a teacher, a guide. My greatest joy in life is seeing people live from their highest expression of themselves. It is also what makes it challenging for me to see people who know better but don't do better. In my career, I've done a variety of work supporting a wide variety of entrepreneurs and businesses. I've worked in my legal capacity to help keep businesses alive through some of the toughest economic circumstances. I've seen businesses collapse and fail for a variety of reasons, including due to user error, a lack of resources, sudden changes in the marketplace, as well as abuse of the legal system. I have seen our legal system used to reach just and fair decisions, and I've also seen it used as a tool to wage economic warfare against an opposing party, against entrepreneurs. I've seen millions of dollars hidden in offshore bank accounts to avoid justice. And I've worked real life cases that have real life smoking guns, a key document buried somewhere in hundreds of thousands of pages of documentation that was discovered just in time. 
I've personally discovered such smoking guns. I have seen a legal marketplace filled with attorneys everywhere who strive to do their best to serve their clients at every level. And I've also seen a legal marketplace that largely fails to meet the needs of legal consumers who need it most. The access to justice gap is real. It is considerable and it extends to a vast majority of small businesses and entrepreneurs in the U.S. I have worked with established businesses and entrepreneurs creating millions of dollars in their businesses each year. And I have supported entrepreneurs launching their very first service or offering to the marketplace. But my care for good people doing good work in the world is what drives me. I do not want entrepreneurs who are committed to their work or to their mission to give up, to be thwarted by a risk or a legal problem that could have been avoided, or to throw in the flag when times are tough and they don't know the way through. And I think the solution is stories, a particular kind of story. Maybe it's because of the family I come from, rich in a history of storytelling, particularly about enduring tough times, including times that required above average guts and grit to endure. Maybe it's just because I'm human and we all love a good story about overcoming the odds. Let me interject here that I've had a good life. I've had a life of privilege. I come from a loving family. I have not wanted for food or shelter or basic human needs, even when my parents felt the weight of wondering how they were going to afford the next round of groceries, or went through bankruptcy and lost their home and picked up and moved with five kids and a six on the way to a new town for a fresh start. I was a kid and I still felt safe during those times. But I have known pain. I have known deep, deep grief. I have known hard work and success and loss. And I've had moments in my life, including moments near death and in excruciating pain, where previous words and stories and the life experiences of others sustained me and kept my thoughts occupied so that I could just continue to breathe. My heart for entrepreneurs started young. I was five when my dad had a conversation with me about the importance of getting good grades, saving all my money, and paying my way through life and certainly through college. So I started saving at five, asking my parents for odd jobs. By age eight, I was canvassing the neighborhood, asking to rake leaves for extra money. By age nine, I had a paper route, and by age 10, I was buying and selling used cars to earn extra money. By age 12, seventh grade in our family, we had to start paying for half of all of our clothing and 100% of all of our personal items and extracurricular activities with friends. I continued working summers, holidays, and weekends, earning money wherever and whenever I could between being a student, studying classical piano several hours per day, and participating in athletics. There was many a school night during high school that I was not in bed until midnight or later and up for zero period the next day, which started at 6.50 a.m. I could hear the minute bell on my sprint to school every day. By the time I graduated high school, I was a 4.0 valedictorian, had been offered full-ride academic scholarships, athletic scholarships, and had $20,000 in the bank, along with a 67 Chevy Impala SS 427 as a literal investment vehicle that I did not yet know would pay for my first year of law school. But it was because of my academics that I got paid over $80,000 to go to university, and I put the extra money in savings. Then I made the decision to go to law school. Shortly after that, life changed for me in a big way. My mom was diagnosed with terminal brain cancer my first quarter of law school and passed away 10 months later. I completed my first year of law school in three days a week, spending time in class every Monday through Wednesday, leaving Wednesday evening or Thursday morning and driving over four hours home to Walla Walla, where I spent time with my mom and my family through Sunday, then turned around and drove back to Seattle for school to start again each Monday morning. I didn't open a law book during my time at home with mom in Walla Walla. Life was in the front seat and law school was in the back. This experience changed my perspective on life changed my perspective on time, on the misconception that we have, that we have time to figure it out, 
or to gain experience doing work that isn't personally meaningful, I decided that I was not going to do work that was not meaningful to me. I was not going to waste any amount of time trying to fit in or go with the system because that's what you were supposed to do. The regular channels were not my path. It probably explains why I wore my favorite fake snakeskin boots to an interview with one of the largest firms in the city, observing all of the closed-door offices and tight-lipped associates, all while thinking this is definitely not the place for me. This shift in perspective also probably explains why I bluntly asked in another interview at a large downtown firm when I had a moment alone with one of the female partners, what is it like to be here and be female? She first looked surprised, paused, and then answered slowly, it's terrible. I thanked her for her honesty and concluded my interview. That would not be the place for me. Instead, I started my own legal practice right out of law school. I sent letters and poorly made business cards to everyone I knew, announcing my conclusion of law school and passing of the state bar. I offered my legal services up in any and every capacity, research, letter writing, consultation. I wrote letters for friends in tight places. I researched all kinds of scenarios. I gave the earnest but limited kind of answers that one directly out of law school might give. I struggled with panic attacks and living on bread and tea while I figured out how to pay for my living expenses in a big city while student loans from law school also came due. And having no previous connections to Seattle or to anyone in the legal industry, I lined up conversations every day of the week with at least one attorney in the area. Didn't matter if they were calling to inquire about my car for sale, true story, or if they'd recently been published in the news for a big case, I'd research their work and ask them directly for a few minutes of their time. I would cold call attorneys and ask for a face-to-face meeting. I found attorneys to be kind, generous, and very willing to mentor. In just a couple of short months, I had more work than I could handle. I remember one attorney telling me that he had accepted a meeting with me only because I had mispronounced the words venture capital. Somehow an ism had slipped out on the end and he knew I needed help, so he gave it. I was willing to create a mentor out of anybody willing to share a few minutes of their time. And I was profoundly thankful for all who did. And it was during this time that my path was born, that I launched myself headfirst into a career where I had to eat what I caught and sort out the work that I liked, the clients that I wanted to serve, and the BS that I could avoid by having a non-traditional path in the law. There is more than what I've shared here that fuels my love for entrepreneurs, but having walked the path since I was young, I have tremendous respect and admiration for anybody who is up to the task of creating a livelihood, launching a business, or choosing to be an entrepreneur. Not everyone makes that choice. So I hope that you will join me here each week for conversations and insights on the journey of entrepreneurship, leadership, and specifically the guts and grit required to create a life and business that you love. The format will be largely interviews using the Socratic method. Just kidding. (laughs) The show will most often just be conversations with entrepreneurs, innovators, and industry leaders business builders who have stories to tell about their successes, about the risks of being in business, about the decisions and the mindset required to build something of influence. There will also be times that I can't help myself and I may record a solo show sharing stories, legal anecdotes, and tips. I have to provide the disclaimer that a solo show under current circumstances may not be truly solo and could feature the background voices of my current co-workers, age two and seven, while they play, tear the house apart, learn social skills, experiment on each other, and generally engage in unexpected behaviors. And unfortunately, I can't promise that no one will be harmed in the recording of my shows. You've received fair warning. But I do hope that you will join me again. I look forward to many conversations about how we dig deep to do what we are here to do. We will get into the nitty gritty of the hardest decisions. We will explore the mindsets of those who innovate and lead. 
We will learn what distinguishes those who endure from those who don't. And we will find out what makes some of our hardest decisions our very best. We will look closely at how times of crisis can create some of our greatest opportunities for positive change and increased efficiencies and new heights in our businesses and lives. Thank you for joining me on this welcome episode. I am Heather Pierce Campbell, the legal website warrior and attorney and legal coach based here in Seattle, Washington. I look forward to talking with you again next week. Take care and stay safe out there. Bye for now. Thank you for joining us today on the Guts, Grit, and Great Business Podcast. We hope that we've added a little fuel to your tank, some coffee to your cup, and pep in your step to keep you moving forward in your own great adventures. For key takeaways, links to any resources mentioned in today's show and more, see the show notes, which can be found at legalwebsitewarrior.com slash podcast. Be sure to subscribe to the podcast. And if you enjoyed today's conversation, please give us some stars and a review on Apple Podcast, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcast so others will find us too. Keep up the great work you are doing in the world and we'll see you next week.